Namaste. You're with Andrew at Yogi Moksha. Thanks for joining for another 90 minute yin yoga practice. Today we're going to focus on the upper body. So from the fingertips down to the hips. And we're going to spend a little bit more time on the extremities. A lot of times when we're working up here, we're working with the core. And we're going to do a bit of that, but we're also going to pay some attention to the extremities and also talk about energy channels or in the Indian tradition, nadis. So similar to the concept of meridians. So hopefully that's of interest. If it is, then let's get comfortable. Maybe bringing ourselves to a comfortable seat position on a block. Some way we can keep the back straight. We're going to start as we often do with some breathing, just to bring the attention inward and our focus to a single point. Breathing or pranayama. Control of the breath. So sitting up straight. The technique we're going to use today is called alternate nostril breathing. So if this is already in your practice, feel free to retain the breath. Um, if not, we'll start from the, the basics. We take our right hand and we want to bend those first two fingers in. We're going to be using the ring finger and the thumb just to block the left and right nostrils. And we'll talk a little bit about it as we do it, but let's just get started in the practice. So with our right hand, with that ring finger and thumb, just practice closing the right nostril and the left nostril. And we're just going to do that coordinated with the breath. So sitting up straight, start by blocking the right nostril. And we're just going to inhale. Block the left nostril with the ring finger and exhale through the right nostril. Inhale through the right nostril. Block with the thumb and exhale through the left nostril. So just continue with this at your own pace and to start with, make the inhales and exhales the same length. Maybe a count of four. As I said, unless it's actually in your practice already, don't worry about the retentions on the inhale or the exhale. Bringing the eyes to a close if you're comfortable. Drawing in through the right, block, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Block with the ring finger, exhale through the right. It's a great balancing practice. And over time, You start to lengthen the exhales longer than the inhales. Lengthening the exhales just removes more carbon dioxide from the, the body as we breathe out. Deepening the breath and deepening, deepening the relaxation. Now in the Indian tradition, the left nostril is the point at which 
a Nadi called Ida. Exits and the right nostril, a Nadi called Pingala. Pingala is more masculine and represented by the sun. And Ida has more feminine qualities, more relaxing and associated with the moon. And both of these nadis start right at the base of the spine and basically spiral the way up through the chakras, coming to the point between the eyebrows before branching out to the nostrils. So take an opportunity to practice that whenever you can, very balancing, and if you want just relaxation, just try just left nostril breathing for a while. If you're feeling quite anxious at any point in the day, simply block the right, and just breathe in and out through the left nostril. So we're gonna start a practice now. First posture, we're going to be working with the wrists and the fingers. So we're coming to Cesar, so just sitting on our heels. We're simply just going to stretch, stretch those fingers back using the other hand. So we'll start with the right hand. Just a couple of minutes each side. No need to yank it right back, just a gentle pressure. We want to feel it down the front and beginning up the forearm here. And what we're doing here as well is just working the physical element of the fingers and the beginning of the wrists. We're also working with another nadi, which in the Indian tradition is called Yashas Vini, which starts again in the base of the spine, comes up to the navel chakra, and then branches down the right hand side of the body, down to the foot, coming up to the hand, to a point in the middle of the palm before spreading out. And the Nadi aperture or opening is actually through the thumb. So just relaxing the muscles in the hand, back of the hand, and in the forearm. You can put the arm down here if it's a bit tiring to hold it up there. As long as we're still getting that nice stretch through. If you want to, you could fold the hand down. Just loosening up all the joints in the fingers and the wrist. Bringing that energy all the way to the extremities. Releasing. Maybe just roll the shoulders, coming to the other side. In the same, just a nice gentle pressure, pulling the, pulling the fingers back so we begin to feel the stress just on the inside of the forearm, holding it up here or even down here if that's more comfortable. Starting with our focus on the physical body, as we often do, just relaxing 
Relaxing all the muscles in the target area, wrist, forearm. As we relax, beginning to feel things open up a little bit. Feeling some tension along the inside of the forearm. And some healthy compression in the healthy stress in the, the bones, so in the fingers, finger joints, and the wrist. Now we talked about the nadi on the right hand side, on the left hand side. This same nadi comes up from the base of the spine, the navel or Manipura chakra, before splitting down to the foot and the arm. And on the left hand side, this nadi is called Hasti Jiva. So right hand side, Yashasvini. Left hand side, Hasti Jiva. And again, comes to a point here. We've got a little pressure point here if we want to. We could even just apply a little bit of pressure there, activating, stimulating that nadi. Couple more breaths. So now we're going to move up. Our next target area is going to be wrists and elbows. We're also going to work with the lower body a bit with some balance. So we're going to come into a squat. And we're just going to put our arms or hands underneath the armpits. Uh, sometimes called mother hen, pretty obvious why. So uh, it's easier. See? This way. Now, if there's a problem with the balance rolling back, what we can do is bring a block in. Under the heels. And that'll just keep the centre of gravity forward. Since our primary target area is the wrists and elbows, that's absolutely fine. So we're here for about three minutes, so I want to make sure that you're comfortable. Maybe you've got the block in there, maybe not. So again, taking the awareness to the target area, to wrists, elbows. Just relaxing. Feeling the posture open up a little bit. Keeping the breathing through the nose always. Just exploring the connective tissue stresses here in this posture. And down the back of the hand the outside of the arms, as well as those that we're producing from the squat. So we got some um, connective tissue stress down there in the glutes. Some of us maybe even in the quads. And depending how much we have to round the back to maintain our balance, yeah, we might have a little bit of uh, stress in the, uh, the back muscles, and thrasso lumbar, and healthy stress in the wrists, elbows, and the radius and the ulnar bones in between those two. Just as we gradually work our way up both arms.
If at any stage we just need to come out of the squat and maybe pop that block in, that's fine. The key with yin is not depth. It's about the amount of time that you can spend in the posture. So if we need to make ourselves a little bit more comfortable, that's fine. A little bit of discomfort's good, maybe not too much. And just releasing. Coming back to Cesar or just kneeling on the heels. So just a little bit more work on the wrists. So here, we're just going to place the tops of the hands on the mat in front of us. And we can control the amount of pressure that we're feeling there, the amount of weight that we bring forward if we're uncomfortable. Then we just lean back a little bit. So again, it's not about going deep. It's just about finding a position that allows us to feel a bit of stress, but stay there in relative stillness for some time. So again, just a couple of minutes, got the fingers pointing back. You can feel it here coming up the outside of the arms. So in that stillness, just exploring that connective tissue stress in the outside of the arms, maybe coming all the way up. And of course, some healthy stress there in the bones. Find some stress to the wrists, the radius, the ulna, and the elbows. Bones, like muscles and connective tissues, tendons, etc., really benefit from healthy levels of stress because the body is always breaking down and rebuilding bone. And if we apply healthy stress to areas where we want to, maintain mobility and strength, particularly at yeah, movement joints, then by applying that stress, we're letting the body know that that's an area that we want to be rebuilt with that strength. If we don't stress these areas, then yeah, the body doesn't know that we need the strength in that area and that what, that's what can lead to degeneration of bones and, and joints. So well worth a couple of minutes of discomfort. Just a couple more breaths. So now we're going to swap round, we're going to Point the fingers back again. Put the palms of the hand towards the mat. And again, you pick the level of stress that you want. So bringing the hands further back, less stress. If you need more, simply bring them forward. Maybe start no further forward than the knees. Just pause here, find that edge. Relax the muscles, maybe using the breath by breathing in to that area around the wrists and the forearms. And as we relax, we may find that the posture opens up a little bit. And if we want to, we can just shuffle those hands forward just to maintain that healthy level of stress. And then we're finding stillness. And it's a flexible stillness that allows us to continue exploring if we want to. And just find some stillness, bringing your attention to 
Connective tissue stress coming up the inside of the arms this time. Inside of the arms, mainly the forearms, maybe coming up towards the shoulders. And of course, that stress again on the fingers, finger joints, wrist joints, and again, potentially the elbows. Just a couple of breaths here now. And just gently, gently releasing. So now we're going to come up, we're going to move up the arms. We're going to work with the shoulders, chest. So we can do this either from a cross legs position like this, if you're comfortable like that. Or you might want to try a shoelace. Just bringing the knees on top of each other, tucking the feet on the side of the, the hips, coming to a seated position. And then whichever knee we've got on top, we're going to take that hand out to the side, bring it back to the middle of the back. Pull the left hand out. And if we can, we're just going to interlace those fingers. If we can. Now, if we can do that, that's great. If not, you can just hang it on. Or just hold on to the t shirt or a towel. Or a strap. Uh, not long here, just a couple of minutes. So opening the chest up nicely here and just moving that connective tissue stress further up the arms. And still feeling on the inside of the arms here. Coming across the front of the chest and up into the shoulders. Nice stress in the bones. So elbow, humerus coming up to the scapula and the clavicle and the shoulder. Probably got the spine nicely extended as well. Couple of breaths. And releasing. If you're in shoelace, let's just swap the Legs over. And obviously your feet can be wherever you choose, further back, slightly less stress. If you want more in the hips, just bring it forward. I'm going to take the, it's got the left knee on top. I'm going to take the left hand up, right hand out to the side. Interlacing the fingers. Just finding that edge. Relaxing. Maybe feeling the posture open up a little bit. Finding silence. Doesn't matter whether we're holding the fingers, the hands, or just the t-shirt or a towel. 
As long as we're feeling that opening across the chest, that connective tissue stress in the inside of the upper arm and the outside of the lower arm. And if we're in shoelace, of course, we've got the bonus stress on the glutes, the IT band, and the outside of the top leg. And some nice stress being applied to the shoulders, elbows, arms. Just enjoying the last couple of breaths here. And gently releasing. So having worked our way up from fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders, we're going to move now to the, the neck, so shoulders and the neck. So I'm going to suggest coming back into Cesar again, so just sitting on the heels. From here, we're just really going to move our head through the four directions, so backwards, forwards, left and right. We're going to do that for a couple of minutes in each direction. Now for your hands, you can place your, just place the hands on the knees. Sometimes people are more comfortable with them on the mat or even on blocks whatever you're comfortable with. So first, let's just allow the head to fall forward. We're not dragging the head forward, we're just allowing gravity to bring it forward. Feeling the connective tissue stress in the back of the neck and maybe up the, uh, up the back, the thoracolumbar muscles. As we relax and breathe, we may find the head comes forward a little bit more. In terms of stress on the bones here, we've got a nice flexion of the upper spine, the cervical spine. So an opening up of the spine at the back. Compression at the front in the area of the throat. And if we're tuning into you know, more subtle energies, then maybe we can start to feel some movement from the spine area up towards the back of the head. On the next inhale, slowly bring the head up. Now we're just going to allow the head to, to fall backwards. If you want to support yourself, that's fine. But again, not forcing the head back, just allowing the head to fall back enough that we can start to feel some stress and tension here in front of the neck around the throat. Again, just finding the edge. Relaxing. Maybe finding things open up a little bit. And 
If you feel any pinching or tingling, then maybe just bring the head a little bit forward. Obviously a lot of nerves in that area. We don't want to be pinching any of them. And just as we settle in, it's a great way of opening up the front of the throat, the fifth chakra, the Shuddha. So that self-expression, communication. And obviously opposite to the previous posture. A great extension of the cervical spine here. So a compression at the back, opening up at the front. Again, very slowly, bringing the head back to the center. We'll be going to the left hand side first, but just a couple of breaths here. And then on the next exhale, just allow the head to drop towards the left hand side. Don't try and raise the shoulder to meet it, just leave the shoulder as it was. Then allow gravity to take the head to the left hand side. It's starting to feel some tension here in the right hand side of the neck, maybe coming down top of the shoulder, maybe even a little bit down the back. Just breathing, relaxing. The secret with yin always is not to go to the maximum edge, somewhere you can comfortably be for a decent length of time. To relax. And just to open the mind to those sensations. So as well as the stretch in the right side of the neck, we're getting some lovely lateral flexion in the cervical spine. Again, any pinching, just come back to the center. Inhaling, gently bringing back to the center. And on the next exhale, exhale, just allowing the head to fall to the other side, to the right hand side. And if you want to have a hand out to the side to support you, that's fine. Just don't bring that shoulder up. Just relax. And allow the head to fall to the right. Feeling the connective tissue stress here in the left hand side. Relaxing the muscles in the neck. So that all of that stress is with the connective tissues and not the muscles. Enjoying that um, bit of lateral flexion in the cervical spine and the neck. Maybe just feeling things open up each time we exhale. And 
again if you're starting to tune into more subtle energetic sensations then you may well start to feel something coming down the left side of the face, shoulder, left side of the body. Gently, on the next inhale, back to the center. So our next posture is gonna be continuing the progress. We're gonna work on the shoulders and the back, so the thoracolumbar. And we're gonna do that with, just with a nice, simple caterpillar. Um, now, because we're gonna be wanting to round the back, because that's where we're gonna be wanting to feel the tension, we can simply come forward, but if you prefer, you could use something like a bolster to just roll the body over. A lot of people find that this, it's easier to create a nice curve and feel a little bit more tension there in the spine, but that's, Personal choice. Otherwise, just folding forward. As an added option, if you want, we could take the right arm on top, eagle arms. roll forward. Now whether with or without the bolster, that's going to help with the arching of the back. So again, not trying to drag ourselves towards the mat. We're not trying to stretch the hamstrings here, it's about the back. So just finding that edge. Pausing, relaxing the muscles all the way up the back. Finding stillness. Uh, exploring that thoracolumbar stress. And with the eagle arms, if we're doing that option, Feeling a little bit more stress there in the shoulders. More so in the right shoulder here, if we've got the right arm on top of the left. And healthy stress in the bones. Starting with the spine, opening the spine up, so a nice deep flexion of the spine. All the way up from the lumbar to the thoracic to the cervical. The more you allow the head to drop forward, The more flexion you're going to get there between the spinous processes there. And just enjoying some silence for the last minute or so.
Inhaling, going up, releasing those arms. Getting ready for the other side, so exactly the same now, we're going to do another side. So we bring the left arm on top if we're going to use the eagle arms. If not, you just simply stay down in caterpillar. Now, we can use the eagle arms with or without the bolster. Again, if you want to use it, quite possible to do so with the eagle arms as well. Just finding that edge. First point of physical resistance. Not trying to push through it. We just pause at the edge. Have a peep over. Breathe into it. Breathe into the target area, so the back muscles, the thoracolumbar area, and the shoulders. As we exhale, we might find things relax, open up a bit, and give us the opportunity to adjust. Finally finding some stillness. Exploring the Connective tissue stress coming all the way up the back, thrasolumbar, all the way up to the neck. And healthy stress in the spine. Nice flexion, opening up the back of the spine, compressing the front, allowing the head to fall forward. And because we've got our left hand on top, if we're in the eagle arms, that's going to be where the focus of the stress in the shoulders is on the left hand side. You're also going to feel something on the right. And while we're here, I might just remind ourselves that. Now it is the energy channels. So coming up from the root chakra or muladhara at the base of the spine, up to the navel chakra or manipura, and then branching off to the feet and the hands. So maybe we can feel some subtle energies, particularly on the left hand side here. Coming all the way from the navel up the sides of the body, down both arms, into the centre of the palms. coming up and releasing. Now we're going to take a well-deserved two-minute rebound. So we can either just lie back as I am, or if you prefer, just lie back completely on your back. Close the eyes if you're comfortable. And take your attention to the areas that we've just been working so we've worked through fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders, some work on the back, across the front of the chest, and also the neck. 
Just trying to open the mind to the sensations that arise. Maybe they're purely physical. Maybe there's something a little bit more energetic there. Whatever it is, just allowing it to be there, pass through. Maybe it feels fluid, slightly electric. Maybe it feels like it's moving one way, two ways. It's always a unique experience. So try and take a note of it each time we practice. And just a couple more breaths here. So for our next target area, we're going to work with the abdominals in the front and the thoracic at the back. And we're going to need, you can either use blocks or bolster. I tend to use a couple of blocks. Um, some people prefer to use the bolster, a little bit more comfortable. But whatever we're going to use, we're going to want to place it in the thoracic region, sort of between the shoulder blades. And the effect that we're looking for on the target area is going to want to open up the rectus abdominis and the stomach muscles. So placing your blocks, maybe starting with a single block if you're more comfortable. Just under the back there. And allowing the head to come back. Now if that's not comfortable, you can again support the head. You're still going to get some tension here across the rectus abdominis, so that's good. But if you find it particularly uncomfortable on the neck, try that. Just first finding that edge. Pausing. Breathing into the target area, so the rectus abdominis and the thoracic spine. As the posture opens up, you might decide the ones a little bit more, maybe we're going to bring in that bolster or a couple of blocks. And again, just fold backwards. Always being mindful of the, the neck and the pinching there. Supporting the head if you want to. Settling in. Finding that stillness. Maybe as we settle in. If we're comfortable as an option, we can take our hands above the head. Hold on to the elbows or extend the arms. And in the stillness, exploring that connective tissue stress coming up the front of the body through the rectus abdominis, maybe continuing further up. Coming up into the arms, if we have the arms above the head.
and exploring the healthy stress in the bones. So a beautiful extension of the spine. Compressing those spinous processes together, opening up the front of the spine, opening up across the chest. Coming up into the shoulders, scapular, clavicle. And they're really just relaxing, allowing the body to open up across the front. Maybe again now coming back to the nadis we discussed. The Ashish Vini on the right, Asti Jiva on the left. Coming from the base of the spine to the navel chakra, branching out down the legs, up the side of the body, through the arms, down to the hands, to a point in the middle of the palms. And when we come down the legs, again in the middle of the, the foot, there's a node where it then splits to each of the toes. With the main aperture being the, the big toe. So big toe and thumbs are the ends of the, the nadis. Maybe we can just feel as this posture opens up, that energy moving all the way from the big toes up through the legs, the side of the arms, through the side of the body, up through the arms to the, the thumbs. The energy moving up from the toes, back down from the thumbs to the toes. And now gently in your own time, it might be easier to just roll to one side. <laughs> Removing any blocks or bolsters and coming back to get into a well-deserved 
couple of minutes of rebound. I'd suggest just lying flat on the back to allow the body to relax so that you can really tune in. So taking the tension, the focus straight away to the target area. So the rectus abdominis at the front and also the spine at the back. And just opening the mind to the sensations, physical, subtle, whatever they might be. Starting by just following them. Well, you follow them, don't try and direct them. And see if you can describe them. How do they feel? Not important why they're there. What's important is that you are open to sensing them. And start to become aware of how the sensations feel. The great opening up of the chest there, to the heart chakra, balance, love, compassion, also the throat chakra again. So our next posture is going to be moving down a little bit. We're going to be working on the obliques. So you can stay lying on your, your mat for the next posture. And we're going to take the take our buttocks over to the left-hand side of the mat. Lying down, we're going to take the feet to the right-hand corner. And then we're going to shuffle the upper body towards the right hand of the other end of the mat. We can extend our arms over. And maybe the left arm. So we're working on the, the left oblique. So extend the left arm, holding that left wrist with the right hand. And just pausing here for a moment. Just finding that edge where in the target area of the left oblique, we can feel a nice stretch down that side of the body, particularly around the center in the oblique. Finding that edge, pausing, relaxing, As we relax, maybe we sense that things have opened up a little bit. Or maybe we can just adjust, go a little bit deeper if you want, or even back off a little bit. If we want, we can also take that left foot on top of the right, cross those ankles, and that will add a little bit more intensity the oblique stretch. And finally we've got the position of the, the head, so we can have the head facing right or left. Just explore which gives you the degree of stress that you're most comfortable with here in the target area. And while we're there, we just find stillness. which is either the easiest bit or the hardest bit. Finding stillness, exploring that connective tissue stress. In the left oblique, maybe coming down the IT band down the outside of the left leg. Maybe coming all the way up the left hand side, up through the left arm. So we've got a bit of 
lateral flexion again in the spine. Maybe a little, little bit of stress in the left hip. Lumbar, left shoulder, scapula, clavicle. And certainly in the cervical spine, depending which way you're facing. And if we're receptive to those subtle energies today, here we could take our mind back to that. Hastajiva, Nadi down the left hand side of the body, all the way from the left big toe, left hand side of the body, navel chakra, and then all the way up the left hand side of the body. Um, to the left palm. And just gently releasing, coming to the other side. Just going to shuffle over to bring the buttocks over to the right hand side of the mat. Walking those feet over to the left hand side. And the upper body and arms to the left hand side at the top of the mat. Finding the edge. Point where we've just got a nice stretch down the right hand side of the body. Pause in here. Relaxing. Maybe using the breath to relax the muscles down the right hand side of the body. Breathing into the right hand side. Exhale, relax. We relax, and I want to take that right ankle over the left arm. Trying to keep the right buttock on the mat as far as possible, not turning to the side. If you want to explore, you can try it the other way around and put the left ankle on top of the right. And just decide which works for you best. There you've got connective tissue stress all the way down the right hand side of the body. The obliques. IT band down the outside of the right leg. And coming all the way up the right hand side of the torso into the arms. And maybe again, dispensing that energy channel or Nadi. Yashash Vinny on the right hand side. Right thumb to the 
और बिंतल एनर्जी और प्राणा मूविंग थ्रू Drawing in prana from the breath we take in. Moving it throughout the body where required. Through this network of nadis. And just gently relaxing, releasing, staying where you are, just lying on the, the mat. Taking another couple of minutes. So again, really using these rebounds, not so much as a physical recovery, but more as a, an opportunity for a bit of introspection as we relax. Taking our attention focus inwards, so this time to the sides of the body, the left and right sides. Maybe comparing how those two sides feel. Do they feel similar or quite different? Not unusual for them to feel different. Quite often we have very different ranges of motion in different sides of the body, different responses to the same movement. So what can we sense on the left side and the right side? Can we sense something physical, something more subtle, fluid, static, energetic? Is it moving the full length from the toe to the thumb? Do we feel more open? Or do we feel a bit more, not tense, but do we feel less open, more reserved? Just a couple of breaths. We're going to stay with the um, obliques for our next posture. And we're going to do a posture that we've, we've used a few times, but with an additional variation. So it's going to be a, sometimes called a twisted deer. From our feet in front, we're going to take the right foot back, and we're going to bring that left foot towards the right knee and then from there we're going to twist and you know, your twist may be here it may be further around we can use a bolster here so you might want to have that to hand yeah. twist around here this is where we're going to start finding our edge. You should be able to feel this in the obliques already, probably more so in the left oblique while we're up here. Yeah, using the breath, help us relax the target area, so the core of the body, the obliques, torso. And then as we relax, and we feel the posture opens up, we've got a few options. We can bring in the bolster. And 
And we can come down onto the bolster, taking the weight of the torso on the bolster while allowing us to maintain that nice twist that we've got. And again, position of the head is going to affect how much twist there is. We can stay here. We can come down onto the elbows. Or we can bring this right arm through, much like a thread the needle. And rest on that. And the effect of bringing this arm through is just to intensify the twist. So if you're comfortable on the bolster, then just stay there. And wherever you end up, just find some stillness. Explore the connective tissue stress in the obliques, probably more so the right obliques now. The obliques coming through to the rectus abdominis and stomach. Maybe even the hip flexor and the quad. And the healthy stress in the bones, knees, femur, pelvis, hip joint. And of course, that beautiful twist all the way up the spine, mainly in the thoracic. particularly with the shoulder through here, the scapula, the clavicle, the opening up across the back. I'm just enjoying the last half minute or so in silence. And now just gently unfolding as we inhale, going back up. So exactly the same to the other side. I'm just going to take that left foot behind us. Bring that right foot towards the left knee. And start to twist again. If the twist is, is here today, that's fine. And sides can be very different as well. On the other side, we might have a lot more mobility. So you just finding your personal edge. We find that, we pause. Make sure we've got our bolster to the hand if we need it. Relaxing, taking the breath into the target area of the obliques. And as we relax, we might find that things open up a little bit. And we get an invitation to go a little bit further. But if we don't today, just staying here is going to give us a tremendous twist and work the obliques. So again, we might come down, we might rest on the bolster, 
and left. All right. Probably more intensity by having the head turn to the right here. We might rest on the elbows. We can come all the way down. Or as we did on the other side, we can take that left arm through like a thread the needle. And rest on that. And the effect of that is going to be just to bring the shoulder into it a bit more. And as we're working the upper body, it's a good way of bringing a bit of upper body focus to this twist. Next inhale, just gently coming back to our lying position for our final posture for Shavasana. So making yourselves comfortable however you prefer Shavasana. I'd suggest lying on the back Arms and legs relaxed a little away from the body. Palms turned upwards. Feet a little way apart. And if you're comfortable, bringing the eyes to a close. As we started, as we move towards the end of the practice, let's bring our attention back to the breath. It's a very top of body focused practice. So as we bring our attention back to the breath, moving in and out of the body, Perhaps we can sense some of the differences from before the practice to now. As you inhale, perhaps we can feel some different things in the upper body, different sensations. And as we exhale, perhaps the air leaves us differently. In a physical sense, perhaps the upper body now feels different than it did before the practice. The 
Inhaling and exhaling. And taking our attention to tips of the fingers and the thumb, just walking through where we've been on our 90 minute journey today. Started with the fingers, the wrists, elbows, shoulders. And we came up to the neck, back down to the shoulders and the back, front of body, the rectus abdominis. Before we did some twists and brought the sensations back to the center, to the core. And we've done a little bit of work, not too much around the hips. And coming down hips, hip flexors. So just focusing on those individual areas. And maybe stepping back to appreciate and focus on the whole upper body. Maybe even now, moving through the physical towards the more subtle sensations that we may be able to discern. Coming back to some of those rebounds where we explored the sensations after the posture. How do we sense the whole upper body right now? Is there a feeling of openness? They feel more energetic. Perhaps we're feeling a little more fluid in the upper body. Perhaps we can sense some of that energy moving the various nadis that we've discussed and worked today. Uh, Ida and Pingala zigzagging their way up from the base of the spine around the Sushumna all the way up the spine coming up to that point between the eyebrows, the third eye before finishing at the left and right nostrils. So we become more accustomed to turning our attention inward. We become more aware of the energetic movements that are already happening in the Ida and the Pingala Nadis. And as our practice progresses, Nida and Pingala Become clear of obstructions. The prana, the energy will be able to move up through the central channel of the Sushumna, another of the most important nadis according to the Indian tradition. runs all the way from the base of the spine 
at the top of the head. Connecting energy with consciousness. Perhaps we can also feel some energy moving in those left and right nadis. Hastijiva on the left. The Ashishvini on the right. From the navel chakra, Manipura. Coming through the sides of the body, down both arms to a point in the middle of the palms before spreading out to the five fingers. Each time we practice, we practice to explore Subtle sensations. We're increasing our store of prana. We're clearing the energetic channels, the nadis, as well as improving our awareness of this energy and ultimately our ability to move it through the body where required. Just enjoy the last moment in silence. Uh, gently in your own time, maybe take a couple of deep breaths. Bring some awareness back to the body. Maybe wriggle those fingers and toes. Keeping the eyes closed if you're comfortable. Rolling to one side. And ever so gently, slowly, just pushing up into a comfortable seated position. And again, only when you're ready, maybe allow the head to just drop forward a little bit. Gently blink open the eyes. Gaze at the floor for a couple of breaths. before looking forward, coming back to the space that you're in. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Thank you for sharing. Namaste. If you enjoyed the practice, please subscribe, leave a comment. We look forward to seeing more of you on the mat.